On today's High Watt Soundbite, we're having a new look at gain staging. Well, am I ever excited about today's session? We're talking about gain staging, and this is a great follow-up to a session I posted a couple of weeks ago called Audio Signal Path. No question, these two concepts go hand in hand, and a really solid foundation of Audio Signal Path every time is gonna to lead to better gain staging and a better understanding of the whole concept. There are so many articles out there written on the subject of gain staging, different methods and different procedures are going about it. We're gonna keep it really simple today. I want to encourage each and every one of you to start developing the habit of gain staging by ear. I know, right? A, a recording engineer talking about using their ears. You know, a lot of the articles I'm reading out there are talking about levels and signals and, and metering. There will never be any kind of metering or any kind of technology in the studio that ever holds a candle to how powerful our own ears are. That psychoacoustic connection that we have is unbelievable. The fact that we can sit in a room and literally distinguish tens of thousands of different sounds instantly. Not just distinguish them, but we can actually pinpoint exactly in a 360 degree space where that sound is coming from. This is so powerful and something that, you know, I think we often get suckered into the technology and we forget just how powerful our own ears are. So for today's session, I'm gonna go ahead and dial up a really simple guitar tone, gain staging as I go, each step of the way. You know, just like I mentioned in that session from a couple of weeks ago, I like keeping it simple, one connection at a time. The first connection, right out of this electric guitar into this DI. Today I'm using a radial J48. This particular DI is active, it needs power. The only way this, this particular DI can get power is from phantom power from the mic preamp. So one connection at a time. This electric guitar feeding an active DI, the output of this active DI going directly into the mic input of my second API channel, and then the output of that API channel is feeding input number two on my audio interface. So the first thing I'm gonna do is create an audio track up here in Pro Tools. Boom, let's create a mono audio track. Assign the input to two, and uh, for now, we can hear it coming out of the, the main outputs. And if I hit record on that, I've got my guitar. Now, of course, I'm not a guitar player. That's going to become very apparent today. But absolutely doesn't matter. We're just noodling around and coming up with a couple of sounds. Nice, clean, electric DI sound. Well, the very first thing that I'm going to want to know with regard to gain staging is where is this guitar signal relative to that mic pre? How much headroom do I have before clipping? All of these different questions can be answered very quickly if you just sort of start button mashing. This is something that I've always been into in the studio. You know, the first thing that I want to do is just play something and then start messing with that input knob. So, boom. I can hear that I'm frying that top end a little bit right there, right? So if I back that off, let's try and insert the mic pad on this channel. Turn the input way up. Now, I've talked about this in past sessions, but personally, I'll only use a mic attenuator if I absolutely have to. In other words, I don't believe that there's a single thing on that mic preamp that's going to degrade your sound faster than inserting a passive attenuation device, a pad or an attenuator. I'm trying to always run my mic pre's as hot as I possibly can before clipping. So the simplest way for me to find out where that is with this guitar is to play with that purposely go into overdrive so I can hear that thing clipping. And then I want to go way under. Nice clean signal. I can kind of dig into it a little bit without frying anything. Okay, I would consider that a fairly good DI signal, a good place to start. Now, something else that I think is important to point out is I don't spend a lot of time in my studio paying attention to the metering world. Like, what is my input level going down on that track? And there's a reason for that. You know, I referenced this in a session that I posted over a year ago called Gain Structure in Your Studio. I talked about how important it is to come up with a, a reference point and a relationship between 
a fixed point on your volume control and what that sounds like in the studio as far as volume and loudness goes. That relationship that I have in my own studio with a fixed position on my volume pot, it does a lot of stuff for me because as long as I set that fixed position before I start to work, I don't really need to look at meters because I know that I'm familiar with how loud a guitar should be when it's properly recorded. I haven't looked at the level that I'm recording on this track, but I already know it's just about right based on what I'm hearing back in my speakers, right? I have a relationship, a very good relationship between what that point is on my volume pot and what that should sound like in my room. So when I'm gain staging a lot of times, I'm not looking at those visual representations. I'm using my ears. Why? Because I have a fixed reference point in my studio and a relationship between that fixed point and how loud that should be. I swear this whole gain staging business becomes really simple and easy when you just use your ears. Well, the first thing I'm probably gonna wanna do to this is I'm gonna wanna introduce some kind of amp sim. The way I like to go about doing that, the last thing in the world I wanna do is insert that directly on my guitar DI track. I want total control as I move forward and build my guitar sound. I'm gonna add a brand new auxiliary track immediately below that guitar DI. This auxiliary track is gonna host my amp sim. In this particular case, I think we'll just boot up, uh, let's make it a Marshall Plexi Classic. So now I've got this amp sim sitting on its own auxiliary track. All I have to do is assign it an input Let's call it bus one in this case, okay? We're gonna make bus one the input to that Marshall cab. So up on my guitar DI, I'm gonna go ahead and use a send to do that. I'm gonna go ahead and dial up bus one. And of course, I'm gonna make it a pre-send. And I'm gonna adjust how much of this DI signal that I wanna feed this amp sim. Going back to that reference of one connection at a time, right? We just dialed in a really clean, awesome, electric guitar DI sound. We've got good level to tape. We absolutely don't wanna be messing with that sound anymore or that track or levels or anything. So when it comes time to create an amp sim, instead of just inserting that amp sim directly on the guitar DI channel, I always, always create it as a separate send. So now I can turn down my guitar DI totally and I can just be listening to this guitar amp based on how much level I send from this bus. So I'm not ever messing with that first DI track, okay? That thing stays intact. The levels are going down to tape just the way we want them. Now I've got this bus that I can just simply select and just feed as much of this DI signal into that guitar amp as I want. So literally, there it is, just start. harmonic distortion that I want to hear so I'm just gonna back it off of here and once again I've got that volume pot at that fixed position so I'm not really having to look that much at levels I can just use my ears dial that sound up until it sounds just about right and then lo and behold when I look at the metering it's just always about right that volume and sort of loudness relationship that you have in your own studio is so important because it can sort of free you up from visuals. Gain staging is all about using your ears, you know? Dial that sound up, plug that guitar in, figure out what it sounds like when it's too hot and when it's too low. Dial in the sound that's just about right to your ear. And if you're using that fixed point of reference on your volume and your, and your studio monitors, you won't even have to look at the level. You're gonna notice that you look down and see, looks just about right, looks perfect. So we got a simple kind of clean electric guitar sound going on. Let's put some delay on that track. Well, the very same thing happens again. I'm not gonna wanna insert a delay directly across that amp sim channel. I want all of these things on individual controls, right? I want total control of the sound. So I'm gonna create a brand new mono auxiliary and I'm gonna go ahead and put an insert on there, a delay. Let's go with uh, H delay on the input. We're gonna feed that from bus two. We can go to our amp sim track and we can 
create bus to, we can set it to pre. And I'm gonna end up doing exactly the same thing again. I want to know where I sit in that delay. What does it sound like when I end up sending more of this electric guitar sound into that delay? So. Very simple guitar tone, but I love that I've got complete control on every aspect making up this sound. You know, we gain staged every step of the way, and because we use that pre-fader send and on an auxiliary to continue that sound, we didn't mess with that previous gain stage. This is so important, and why I love creating my sounds in this kind of format. Yeah, this method of gain staging has always been very effective for me. Always looking forward and not looking back, right? Finishing that level of gain staging and then moving on and forward from there. That with the combination of having a fixed reference point in your studio and an actual relationship to what that sounds like, yeah, I think you're gonna find that gain staging becomes a lot simpler and a lot more fun. Well, thank you very much for sitting in on today's session. I hope this inspires you to gain stage individually and one connection at a time.